expecting your partner to be your antidepressants and your fix all and yeah. it's, it's not, not very unfair burden. Yeah. I ended up realizing that I was micromanaging a lot of my romantic encounters to make it feel like it mm. was perfect. In romantic relationships, let's not take away the fact that there is still love even in the bad. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Defining. My name is Dennis Ngango, but on the streets, they call me HBD. Not happy birthday, but hot boy Denny. In this video, we're bringing back defining conversations where my friends and I unpack some really important topics. This week, we're keeping it close to home and we're talking about love. Not the exciting and inspiring love that comforts your soul, but the uncomfortable and toxic side of it. This conversation is brought to you by Netflix and inspired by Malcolm and Marie, a Netflix original that depicts the unraveling of a seemingly perfect Hollywood relationship. You know what, Malcolm? I feel like once you know someone is there for you and once you know they love you, you never actually think of them again. It's until you're about to lose someone that you finally pay attention. It's not a love story, but a story about love and how we can all be the villain in someone's life. Without further ado, let's meet the gang. Hi everyone, my name is Azzy the Soul Star. Hi, I'm Norma and you've already met me. Yo, what's up, this is Penyu, but everybody knows and loves me as Hoops. What's up guys, my name is Bongani, the proudest African guy, a risk taker, a believer of a successful nation, a dreamer by night, a dreamer by day, period. <laughs> so what's gonna happen in this video is that I'm gonna present a scenario inspired by the film and then we're gonna say whether we agree or disagree. You ready? You guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can enable your partner's toxicity. <laughs> no, I think it actually depends on the scenario. What do you mean? I, I th Give mm, us a scenario. I, I disagree. Bongani, it sounds disagree. like you you know why you disagree. Exactly. Uh, tell us. Exactly. So, guys, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> tell so, us. The thing is, Nim, the partner is supposed to bring out the best in you. So, mm -hmm. it's not enabling it, but then they're just showing your true self. Like, you hide yourself when you're with people, but. When you you when you with your partner, you can't hide that. It shows up. But it's not the opposite partner who's enabling it. It just shows up. Uh, I, 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 I hear what you're saying. saying. I That's that. why I also I like it that. <laughs> I hear that. But That's... from my side, I believe that you can only have healthy relationships if you have good boundaries. Thank you. Okay. So if you're also just like letting things open Advice. all the time, someone is gonna just continue to speak to you and treat you a certain way not that i'm saying like the whole toxicity is like on your fault yeah. i'm just saying that it's really important to have boundaries mm. because without boundaries it's difficult to have healthy relationships i i okay i get that but i think it's tricky also because some people are still learning to set boundaries and i think for me mm. when i hear enabling i'm hearing like actively working mm. too mm. so then that's what it makes me think of that like you're actually actively working towards enabling the toxicity of your partner you know you like you're allowing it yeah. kind of to happen and i don't think that that's the case that's why i'm disagreeing in my defense in this case ne, i'm gonna make a reference to the movie ne? yeah like they know each other they know each other's weaknesses they know how toxic they are and it's not that you're enabling it but then you know it's there you said that sometimes it can go to a level where you didn't expect that to reach that's why, like, even the whole movie when it goes out, the arguments that are there, you can see how creative they become in their arguments. It becomes a norm that they being the way they argue so much that they become creative. Yeah. And who wins? You want control because you can't imagine the reason I'm with you is because I love you. That's a very good question. Like, Actually, when there's toxicity in the relationship, is anyone even really winning? No one no, is winning. No one you know? is winning. I think for me, it's it's a lot about the context. Right? Yeah. Like Dennis said, on one side, it's is it the way that you're setting your boundaries, right? Is it mm -hmm. something that you are not doing as a person to ensure that that person is not toxic to you? Mm -hmm. Then there's normal side of saying that, okay, cool. Is it something that you are specifically doing that's in like that's sort of awakening a toxicity in someone else? Mm -hmm. So I was on normal side and saying that I don't think that can happen because in the, the day it's like it's a character trait. That means yeah. it's been there already. Yeah. 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 That's true. That's I mean, true. so yeah. but then on the Dennis side as well, it does make sense in saying that, okay, cool. 
yeah, the certain boundaries and certain things that you have to be vocal about to ensure that your partner yeah. knows yeah. that, hey, what you're doing is toxic for me. Because in the day, like, we are complex, so there's going to be differences of toxicity. Yeah. Maybe the way that we chat, like, I might just be teasing you, right? And it's just a normal thing with other couples, but someone else be like, that's toxic. Yeah. 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 So, mm. Mm. honestly, it's a context matter, but I'm, I'm going to have to. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was, also I get that. That's how I was saying also like it, it, it depends. Depends. Context. Yeah. 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 There's context. There's so much important. context in this thing, but yeah. Okay. Reminding your partner about the ways you've helped them. What about it? It is toxic. Is it it's toxic, toxic or nah? Yeah. Oh, nah. <laughs> Unanimous. Because why must you like I, I, I just think it's a it's a terrible thing. Firstly, when you help someone, there's no need for you to constantly mm, be like, yeah. where now I found you in the gutter and I took you out Thank and I made you, you a person. Because now it's like then don't help me at all. Yeah. You're gonna throw it back in my face. If you're gonna mm. help me, do it out of your the goodness of your heart. Yeah. And do it because you wanted to do it. Don't do it because you wanna hold something against me. Yeah. That's why yeah, it feels like, like you're holding leverage. Now mm. I have an IOU because yeah. you helped me change my tire that one time like it no it doesn't make sense you're sort of limiting the person mm. to yeah. the person that you found them you're not allowing them that mm. space to yeah. go also you're good you are set the man i'm looking at right now is as good as he's gonna get not supporting your partner is toxic <laughs> oops I understand the the idea of supporting your partner, right? But I also think that it's also a bit, um, I don't know, detrimental to the relationship. I wouldn't say toxic if there's an expectation that everything that you do, you know, should be in line with supporting your partner. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's where I'm sort of like yeah, on the fence. Yeah, saying yeah, that yeah. it can bring in some unhealthy expectations. And I'm saying that it's not good, you know, to support your partner, mm. but it also can bring in some unhealthy expectations. What yeah. if your partner wants to be a drug dealer? Now you must support them. I'm hey. <laughs> sorry. No, but it's valid. <laughs> but it's a valid it's question. It's a valid thing, but I think that sometimes saying no to your partner is also still also, support. Yes, yes, that's also a form of support. You know, yes. and also to your point, Hoops, like sometimes in relationships, we can like forget about ourselves because we're so committed to like supporting the, our partner and the exactly. relationship yeah. yeah so i i understand why you are on the fence yeah. no, my boy Bongani Bongani. Bongani. <laughs> <laughs> resident devil's advocate yeah. so listen guys now sometimes with the with the support you might think that you're supporting someone where else you're just using your emotional intelligence ne, to get Guys, oh, I don't know how to explain okay. this. You're going, you're going, yeah, you're going, you're going somewhere. somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes when you support too much, you must be careful in terms of like you're not supporting your own dreams through someone. You're just supporting her dreams, like specifically. It oh, must be. Yeah. I, can, I get what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Like, like, so now, like living yeah. through that person. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's that's the big thing, and I've seen it so many times when it comes to like all these people who are influencers, people like in the media space, ne? Guys, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah. I've seen it happen so many times, man. And it's it's such a distraction for me. Like I end up not supporting you because I know this is not your dream. I like like a lot of Devon Gog, man. She comes up as a DJ, not because she she has a famous father. Um, man. Yeah. She comes up as herself. Mm. We yeah. didn't say okay because she's famous, we're gonna support her. Mm. So yeah. your partner must support you. When it's your dream. That's a form of projection also. Mm. So that's like, it's it's you now, you projecting whatever you want yeah. onto your partner. And you make it a thing of it's us, because I need to, when you're with your partner, you are a unit. Mm. So you now, you <laughs> mask it with the whole, but it's an us thing. Yeah, I it's our get dream. Gig. I, I help we, to get you, know? you, you know? Yeah. And then we forget that we are also individuals within the relationship. Mm. So the projection becomes very easy in the guise of Hela. In, <laughs> in the guise of support. Exactly. So yeah. I think support can you're right. Support yeah. can be toxic. Yeah. yeah. It it depends how you give your support also, I guess. Alright, the last scenario. Are you responsible for your partner's mental health? You know, Marie, you are genuinely unstable. I'm not kidding. Hmm. Hmm. I'm actually concerned for your mental well-being. A big one. Give me times two. Yeah, what? 
is this, I'm, is in, this, I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence too. I'm on the fence too. Is it like a young person? Is it like a young person? Hoops. Did we? Yeah, I'm on the fence. The reason why I'm on the fence now mm. is that it's a yes and a no. Yes. Yeah. You yes. can be responsible for your partner's mental health in the sense that like the things you do yeah. might benefit or be detrimental mm. to their mental health and you as a partner need to know and be responsible enough mm. that what you I'm know doing. you need to be aware, right? I'm you need to be aware. Saying, like I'm yeah. like, okay, Quasi is my part. person, yeah. but I know that these specific things trigger Quasi. Why mm. am I doing them if I yeah. know that they're gonna trigger her and put her in a bad mental space? But then also I know that the other side of the coin for me is that like Sometimes we really just we're just having a bad time. You know, you can wake up and you're and no one can take you out of that bad time. You're in the yeah. middle of your depressive you. episode and there's nothing your partner can do. And I think that expecting your partner to be your antidepressants and your fix all yeah. and it's, it's not going to work. Yeah. It's, it's not, not going to happen. So I think I'm not on the fence because I don't know my answer. I'm on the fence because I think that there's two sides to the coin. Yeah. I'm saying. agreeing with it because at the same time, like you can't like take over someone's experiences yeah. like you can't like help for example someone who doesn't want to be helped help. when you yeah, talk about like yeah. the worst case scenario yeah. uh, because sometimes mental health is so gray that it's it's really tricky to be able to see like how someone is working through things mm. but sometimes your support can only get to a certain point and that's what you're essentially mm. saying and that's why i agree also on the fence yeah and it gets yo i forgot <laughs> <laughs> i think it Hey! <laughs> John Legend explains it better that I'll love you through your perfect and imperfections. Meaning that if I know your imperfections, I'll know exactly on how to support you as a partner in terms of your mental health. It's either your partner wants you to stay away or the partner wants you to be comforted. I, 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 I kind of disagree with what she's saying there. Okay. Uh, hi, Key. <laughs> I'll, I'll give an example. Personally, I, I'm, I'm someone who suffers with a few mental health issues and when I got into a relationship I somewhat got to a point where I expected my partner to understand everything the whole spectrum of my mental health how to take care of it and all of that when I myself mm, don't understand no, it yeah. so that's an unfair burden one two they also have mental health to take care of in the very same situation. Mm, yeah. We don't, as much as it, it, it would be weird to say this, but your mental health triggers or whatever you're going through at that point could also somehow be a trigger to them. So mm. to constantly expect them to be the ones to be like, I got you, you yeah, know what, I'll I'm gonna fix it. this. Listen, sometimes your psychiatrist can't even fix it for you. Your therapist can't even fix it for you. Your medication can't even fix it for you. So to expect your partner to be the one to uphold that for you and maintain that for you, I think is an unfair burden. It's, yeah, it's a very understand. unfair burden. So yeah, that's why I disagree with that. If you don't spend the time yourself to also understand, right? Mm -hmm what are your triggers right how can your partner help you because i do mm. i do agree Bongani, that there's a reason why when you get married it's in the mm. fitness and in health right? That's why it's but mm. no i'm gonna i'm gonna say this i'm gonna say this oh my <laughs> so you goodness you're saying the positive of the positive <laughs> kick comes in yeah however right uh, how can you help someone if they don't even know how to help themselves what is what they actually want period what you're saying is correct, like don't get twisted, right? But yeah, I definitely do agree yeah. that. Yes, like you have to be there you for your partner. To, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, don't put those unnecessary expectations right. to yeah. you. Like, yo, you must heal this whole thing. Because you also don't know. You're probably even unqualified for it. Mm -hmm. There's even yeah. a big reason why people say that you should not get married. You should not take your problems to your, like your husband or your wife should not be your own therapist. There's a specific yeah. reason for that. Mm. You know what I mean? Let's say I'm going through an episode. Ne? Yes. I don't know my identity. I don't know what's going on in my life. I feel confused. I feel like I'm lost. Mm -hmm. How do you want me to behave yes, in a relationship? <laughs> <laughs> But you can't, that's, that's a, I think that's a bit vague. You can't say, how do you want me to act? That's I, need you. Say it's I vague, need you. I need you. But then, this I is what you. we go through. Let me tell you. Now, let me tell you, okay, shut up. I need you as my partner to, one, love me through all of that. Because I might be ugly to you. I might not want to talk to you. And I need you to know and understand that the things I'm saying or the way I'm acting or, you know, all of those things, they're not personal. Yeah, it's not it's about not you. About <laughs> you. And I think that as soon as you make it your responsibility, you're making it about you. Yeah. yeah. They are not supporting you. 
Then it's yo, about you and how you yo, can be, yo. how you can be a no, better person no, in your own capacity. But are you actually helping the situation? No, no. you are not. No. Everybody say yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> to wrap up the video, can everyone just share something that they've learned or understood about love mm -hmm. that they later on realized was toxic? So I think that for me, it's the idea that your soulmate or the one or whatever you want to call it will intuit your spirit like they'll just know how to love you mm -hmm. and they'll know what you want and what you like and what you don't like and i think that that's very unrealistic because yeah. even we have to learn about ourselves and we have to have discussions with ourselves mm -hmm. to realize what we like what we prefer what we don't like what our boundaries are and i think yeah. that love needs to be a discussion mm -hmm. You need to actually openly talk and communicate about things and just assuming that your partner knows everything there is to know about you because there is a wine. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. I'm gonna add on because it's pretty similar, but definitely that, definitely that. Yeah. And also that because you guys once loved each other or you love each other a certain way does not mean that now you must stay together forever. Goze mm. goze. That's so impractical. I think it's important to realize that certain things are definitely not meant to last forever. Things are mm. like nothing lasts forever. The good doesn't last forever. The bad doesn't last forever either. And we need to realize that in relationships as well. Sometimes relationships are to teach you a certain thing about yourself, to teach you a certain thing about how you look at relationships and yeah. what it is you want out of relationships. Some relationships are just for fun. They're just mm. for the fun of it. Some relationships are to show you the dark parts of you that you've been suppressing for so long. That's why people call them karmic relationships because mm. that person is a, a shadow of who you are. And everything that they do you see yourself in them and it starts bothering you so much and all those mm. different stuff so i think in romantic relationships let's not take away the fact that there is still love even in the bad even mm. in the separation there is still love even in not wanting to maintain the relationship because it's not working anymore there is still love even mm. in that just because someone wants to pull out or someone just thinks that it's just not gonna work in the long run or whatever the reasons may be it does not mean that what was shared is now immaterial yeah. it does not take away from that experience nor does it take away from the feelings that existed and are still going to continue existing so i think that's something that that i i learned from that. Powerful. Mm. for me it's the fairy tale idea of love yeah that's something yeah. that yeah. i believe that's what kind of gave us this misconception of what love is mm. and i know for me i felt victim for that properly a whole clown on it i ended up realizing that i was micromanaging a lot of my romantic encounters to make it feel like it was mm. perfect instead yeah. of realizing that love needs to be nurtured yes. and that love is a choice yes. Yes. and then the day that love is work yes mm. you know, yo so, mm. Yo. Yeah, for me that was definitely one of the, one of the biggest things. But for me, like just letting go of that instant gratification that you think love brings, mm. and not realizing that you know, yeah, gotta cook, gotta be a slow cook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for me, I think it's a famous saying that says, "Nyala o nyele." Oh. oh. <laughs> so it, it literally means that get married and then get fucked up, literally. So <laughs> wow. that 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 is one saying that we've been taught as like growing up especially if you're a guy and then especially those guys who go to the mountain you know that they teach you such stuff mm. you know? for me it was so challenging to even make a decision to say okay cool i want to get married but i had no one to talk to they believe when you get into marriage that you you get into this uh mm. prison mm. that you're not allowed to yeah. do anything there the whole dating thing pass, just passes away and like everything just goes six feet under and of which that's not true and that's yeah. one thing I wish I could have learned at the end stage because now that's one thing now I need to start learning from other people than the people that should be close and teaching me what, what yeah. marriage is. So, Yo, yeah. That's very, very mm. powerful. Yeah. Well. Mm. yeah. What I learned aligns with, with hoops, but I think it's more of like an internal thing. I think when you experience like a lot of difficulties and trauma growing up, I think you create this narrative that um, love is perfect and because I'm not perfect I'm not worthy of it and because of that I've had to learn that at the end of the day like 
Nothing disqualifies you from love. Mm. Yes. Nothing disqualifies you from like experiencing the great, exciting love that you sometimes get to see on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing can can stop you from that. Just because your narrative, based of what you've experienced, doesn't look that way, give life and love a chance. Mm. It will work Jeez. in your favor. Just like you said, the bad won't last forever and sometimes the good also won't last forever. Mm. But things will always get better. I think everybody really did. <laughs> Everyone really did the most. I think if you really want context with regards to some of the things that we touched on, make sure to check out Malcolm and Marie right now on netflix in the meantime what you can do is give this video a thumbs up number one if you enjoyed it and number two give it a thumbs up if you want the gang and this concept this segment to come back so let us know and also let's continue the conversation about toxicity and how it relates to love in the comments section below but anyway from myself and the team See you later. Bye. Bye. It's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> you know how Megan does styling like saying, I'm gonna call y'all back. And then she is I'm gonna call y'all back. I'm gonna call y'all back. <laughs> <laughs>